it's so funny. Just just that same day, Tuesday, I get this email, um, and I'm, I, I download it as a PDF. I'm gonna I'll put it up on the website. Um, just going through hashtags um, on Instagram. So it's a pretty length, lengthy article, and then you can hyperlink, I think, with the PDF into specific areas. Um, but just kind of goes over kind of what we talked about, gets into obviously a little bit more detail, um, talks about the algorithms, again, prioritizing posts uh, because people are engaging. People are looking at it, they're, they're liking it, they're commenting, um, all of those things kind of bump it up so your stuff will be seen. Um, so if you ever wonder why um, you're not seeing posts from a buddy who you follow, it's because a they don't post enough or you just ha didn't happen to see it and like it enough because once you start liking something things start to pop back up into your account and um it, it's 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 a pretty cool kind of thing um as to how it works it used to be in the days ago um it was completely chronological so um there were, you'll still see occasionally people talk about posting certain times of the day um etc <clears throat> and there is some truth to that, right? I mean, obviously, if you post at um, three in the morning and most of the people you follow are, you know, people in the West Coast, they're obviously not going to see that. Um, but if you're, you, once your following grows to be more national or definitely international, um, it really doesn't matter um, as to when. And I, I've, I've noticed on my account, obviously, there's peaks during the day, but um, when I look at like days of the week or anything like that, it's very, very consistent. So, um, you know, think about um, just posting. Does that make sense? Don't get kind of lock, locked in too much about <clears throat> when do I post and whatever. Um, just post and do it on a regular basis. And if you want to post the same time every day um, or something like that, that's totally fine, right? Um, but don't don't get bent on the fact that I got to post, uh, you know, at two o'clock in the afternoon because that's when somebody said most of the people are online. Um, doesn't really matter. Posting, 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 and obviously um, utilizing the um, hashtags. Does that make sense? And again, don't worry about what you're posting. <clears throat> I mean, I, I actually the other day I was just looking back through my personal Instagram um, in April turns out to be 10 years on Instagram. I, I was like, wow, I can't believe it's been that long. But, um, you know, and I, the pictures, I look at the old pictures and they're, they're kind of crummy. Um, and it was over filtered and all that kind of crap that we all did back then. Um, April 7 is the first time I posted Instagram. So it was about six months or so after Instagram had gotten started. Um, but, you know, again, it doesn't really matter um, whether it's a perfect picture or, or not. Um, you know, you mean you can do a quick doodle or, or, you know, take a little post it and do a little doodle and take a picture of it or take a take a little movie as you're doing it and post it. I mean, it's fine. Um, you know, people just want to be con they want contact. They want to be entertained. Um, I think if you think of um, your Instagram as kind of a little escape. Um, and that's kind of why we all, I think, go there. It's kind of a little bit of escapism for a few minutes. Um, you'll be better off. Okay, so don't, don't you know, worry about it, especially early on. Um, you know, I mean, I, I obviously think about what I'm posting that day with my business, um, trying to keep things timely. Yesterday was St. Patrick's Day, so posts were tagged and St. Patrick's and they were green and all that kind of good stuff. But, um, you know, for the most part, just kind of do it. Um, and, and you will see progress. Don't expect like, you know, overnight to go 10,000 followers or something, but um, you, you definitely will see progress. Um, and, and in reality at this point, it's not about the followers, right? You guys are just gonna be doing this as a way to self-express yourself. Um, I know you guys are being creative all the time you know, get some of that out, man. Just, you know, let the people see it. Hey, you never know what you're going to stumble upon. And, and then when I talked about like this idea of, of um, passion, um, 
many of these people you see, like we look at Aaron Draplin and how he is and how he's kind of built not only his little design business, but his little business of selling products. Um, I think I showed you guys his stuff. Let me just, let me just go to his website real quick. So Aaron, obviously he's been designing for a long time. It's not even, it's not a new thing, but <clears throat> this idea of these, um, his merch, his kind of side business, his hats and his patches and stickers and um, everything he's been doing here. Um, that came as a, like a little side business, a little um, um, passion project, right? I mean, he was creating things and he wanted to get them out there. Um, and obviously if you make a couple dollars along the way, that's a good thing. Um, and really there's no reason you guys can't be doing that also. Um, and I think, Next week or so, we'll go over some of the kind of ways of doing this. Um, you know, t-shirts, um, you, you can print on demand, which I do. Um, you know, stickers are, are relatively cheap um, to get made. Um, pins aren't too bad to be get made. So, you know, I think, you know, you can do these kind of things. I um, mean, and he has posters and stuff and, and you guys can make posters and, and sell them on demand meaning you print each one as people need it. Um, and, and it turned out again, it started as a passion project. When we looked at um, stuff the other day with, um, God, I'm drawing, why am I drawing a blank here? It's Thursday, I haven't had coffee yet. I've had one cup, not two. Um, oh God, A to Z, Zoe, right? When we, we looked at his projects, again, it started as kind of a passion project. Um, just kind of getting ideas out. So um, I think you'll find a lot of times what becomes something kind of started as like a little side thing, a little passion, um, a little way to be creative. Um, and and I, I can tell you, that's how the National Park Geek thing started. Um, I mean, I've obviously been going to parks for, for decades um, and I've loved those kind of places, but um, it really started as a kind of a, a, a way to kind of um, express myself visually, right? I mean, so I obviously had done photography, but um, on top of that, we, we got into the idea of, you know, creating this into a business and making a logo and, and doing all those crazy things that, I, that I've ended up doing. So um, again, it started out with just kind of a project. Um, if I made a couple dollars, great. Um, you know, it has some extra money for, you know, another getaway or for a birthday or a holiday, that type of thing for a present. Um, it wasn't meant to be, you know, a major source of income. Okay. Um, so I think when you start out that way, it, it's, it's easy, right? It's, it's, there's not a lot of pressure on you. <clears throat> um, and it, it evolved, evolved into something where, you know, today I'm getting orders, you know, from, you know, yesterday I got an order for uh, Pearl Harbor and, and Hawaii. And today I got an order for the National Mall in DC. Um, so I'm getting, you know, orders now, it's a business, but it didn't start out like that. Okay. And it's evolved as it goes. Um, and, and don't think you guys got to know everything, right? It's just about kind of doing it. So um, don't be afraid to put your work out there. Don't be afraid to um, have fun with it. Don't be a way to, don't be afraid to use it as a way to be creative um, and experiment and learn new things. Um, I, I think you're gonna find out that it's a good thing. Does that make sense? And, and, and don't, um, don't count on it being overnight success. It could be, right? I hope it is, but you know, it's, 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 it's less that, it's more of um, being able to kind of get your stuff out there and express yourself and, um, uh, be the creatives that you guys are. I mean, that, that's why you're here. That's why you're in this class. That's why you're going to be taking other classes um, in the, the creative world here um, to get better at this craft. And, and, and don't think just because, oh, I had only had a couple classes, um, you can't do it. You can, okay? Um, and it's not about a degree. I mean, degrees are helpful and, and you need them. And I, I encourage you all to Go through and get a finish up with your associates and go get a bachelor's 
Um, it's going to definitely help out, help out and pay off down the line, um, particularly with finding jobs. Um, I, I, I have no regrets at all for getting my bachelor's and going on to get even my master's degree. So, um, you know, please keep doing this. It will be helpful. It will pay off. Um, you, you're going to learn a ton along the way, uh, which is going to lead you to many other things. But um, you, you don't need a, a degree to get started with this. Does that make sense? Um, <clears throat> just kind of take that leap. Okay. Um, and again, I think Instagram is one of those places where you can take that leap. Um, you're, you're really investing nothing but your time. Um, you know, we'll go over um, how to kind of build a website if you want. Uh, we can go over setting up an e-commerce store. I mean, there's things out there that make it relatively easy, um, you know, and, and you could even sell stuff on Etsy or something like that today where, um, you know, you're not having to do much but kind of put things up. So um, I really, really want to encourage you guys to do it. I know it sometimes it's hard. Um, and obviously we're all living crazy, busy, hectic, um, lives, but, um, you know, there's no better time than now to kind of start it. Okay. Um, you know, people are, are looking for your stuff. People are, are waiting for you to, um, show them a new way. People are, um, are excited to see your stuff. Okay. So don't, don't be afraid to do it. Um, you know, it's, it's, I, I think you're going to find it rewarding. Okay. If that makes sense, you're going to be rewarded by it. You're going to be able to put stuff on your, your, your websites, your, your, your resumes, um, et cetera. So um, keep doing that. So I think the other day too, we were talking about Instagram. We posted that one picture during class. Let me just see what we have numbers wise on that. I was predicting like seven or 8,000. Let me see where we went to at this point. We're up to 10,480. Four, so almost 10,500 on that um, dreamy shot, as I called it, of White Sands National Park. It's out in New Mexico. Um, so you never know, right? Just kind of get the stuff out there and post and have fun um, and, and, and enjoy. And, and at the end, I'll say, um, be a nice person, guys, right? I mean, people like nice people. So be nice share the love, um, you know, think of it as a way of, you know, spreading a, spreading a, a few smiles each day um, to people and um, it'll be good, okay? So tell me your successes, keep doing it. Um, obviously, if you have questions, let me know. Um, use me as a resource, um, whether it's now or in six months, I don't care, send me an email. And, um, you know, I am more than willing to kind of share what I've learned along the way. That's, that's why I teach. Um, so we'll, we'll, we'll get Instagram once kind of done and we'll, we'll talk more about it. I'll get this post up about the hashtags and the use of them. Um, and it kind of tells you about different accounts, how they're set up. Um, so we'll do that. And um, we'll get into um, how to kind of set up um, a business, okay? Just kind of making products, right? I mean, you can obviously do things individually, but you know, like doing t-shirts and how to sell those. Um, you know, you guys are, if you guys are passionate about, you know, Marvel or those kind of thing. I mean, you know, you guys can do stuff. Obviously you gotta watch a little copyright there on that, but um, you know, there, there's nothing, nothing wrong with saying, you know, um, you know, superheroes are, you know, my friends or something like that. And just putting that on a t-shirt and doing something really cool graphically. Um, you can do that now, right? I mean, you can, you can take some cool type and, and just do something and says something that you're into, right? You know, I, I like, you know, superheroes type of thing. Um, you know, we've all seen those superheroes don't, not all superheroes wear capes type of thing. Um, same. So you can do those right now without, um, any, any kind of drawbacks on that. So, um, you know, think creatively, let, let it, let it sit, but let, don't wait. Don't be like, Oh, I gotta wait till it's all figured out. Just kind of go, um, we had it all figured out 
God knows where we would be. And I can tell you, you never figure it all out. You think you might, but you really don't. All right, so um, questions on, on where we are in Illustrator. What kind of questions have you guys come up with? Anything that's um, has been working on this first project that's perplexed you or like, oh, how do we do this again? Or I'm confused or um, anything along those lines? Anybody? Don't tell me you guys. I'm, I'm I struggled a little bit just trying to design something original just because I've never done it before. Uh -huh. but, uh, I kind of stumbled my way through it. Uh, you're, you're just being able to watch the YouTube video channel again, uh, your channel, like the, the lecture again, really, really helps. Well, and I, I apologize. I, I do my, my internet been up and down. Um, and the other day I was going to upload and then the wife was online teaching a class at Saddleback and, um, and, and I, I will get those up. So, um, and I, I will tell you probably the, the you know, the, the, one of the best things I can tell you is to kind of look at stuff, right? So whether you're looking at something like, you know, Aaron Draplin, um, you know, going through like some of his logos that he's done, um, you know, so finding people that you kind of admire, right? Um, I think that's always, um, incredibly helpful and, and and you never know like you know how something's going to kind of um push you out so like this this westwood one i mean i mean it's, it's not like oh my god it's the best logo but they do communication i think they were um a radio kind of thing but maybe just like this kind of idea of a gradient or a gradient going through a a, a letter um you know and that's going to lead you into something else again so i'm not saying um, I, I'm definitely saying don't copy, but what I'm trying to say is you can like get ideas, you know, this public good software. I mean, the idea of a, some kind of a shield and some words around it, you guys can, you know, you're going to make it your own. And that's what I want, you know, this thing for Octopus. I mean, you know, it's not like you guys could never create this. Um, you know, so a lot of times people get like, uh, I don't know, say like kind of held up like, oh, I can't do that. I'm not that good. Well, you are. Um, a lot of it just takes a little bit of time and discovery and, and you know, looking at the proper inspiration. Um, you know, and we know where Aaron's getting his inspiration from. He's getting it from that book that we, we put up on the, um, the, the chat last week, right? And, and again, I'll get that up on the website. Um, so it's, it's not like <clears throat> he's, no designer comes out of the blue with this stuff, okay? Um, they all have to kind of look at inspiration. They all have to kind of um, be inspired. Um, I always like this. Let me just let me break this down here. Um, so everybody knows Claude Monet, right? And we've all seen. Um, <clears throat> hopefully you've seen some of these, um, and he's got th these paintings and they're, they're in, you know, several museums, um, around the world. And he did, it says here, 250 paintings, um, of what water lilies, um, <clears throat> do you know how he painted these things? Anybody? How did he paint the water lilies? Obviously with the oil and the paintbrush, don't be a smart ass. Um, he sat there next to his pond, okay? He lived out in the country of uh, the, the countryside of Paris, had a little house and with a little pond, um, and he painted it. He painted what he saw, um, you know? So he was out there, you know, now he wasn't inventing this. This is a bridge and you can actually still go there um, and see the bridge and see the water lilies. I mean, and, and they're different seasons and the different, the flowers are blooming or not on the, on the water at least. Um, and again, he was doing impressionism. So it was kind of like, he was kind of really trying to share the impression that was being laid upon him, right? So it's like, how is this making him feel? And that's what he was trying to do um, <clears throat> when he painted it. And, and <clears throat> excuse me, that was part of the impressionist movement was that kind of selling that idea of impression. How did people feel? Um, which was kind of radical from, prior to this where things were a lot more realistic. So 
um, when the, the impressionism, the impressionistic movement came along, um, again, they were trying to not only uh, show the subject matter, but also to try to show feelings along the way. Um, but he had to physically look at what it was. And he had seen them a thousand times because he lived there. And, you know, he painted them once. And it's like, well, did he have to look at them again for the next one? Yeah, because things change, the light change, the, the flowers change, the um, positioning of things change. So um, you gotta be inspired guys. You have to look at stuff. Um, don't, don't, again, just don't think you're gonna make up this stuff. And as a designer, as an artist, and I don't, I don't care if you're doing the next DC comic stuff, Marvel comics, or you're doing the next logo for whatever the company is, you gotta look at stuff and be inspired um, and you got to physically be looking at things that will, will help you to, in your creative process. Um, so one of the firm companies I love is a company called Pentagram. Um, they're a New York based um, company predominantly where they have offices in London and do they have back in San Francisco again? New York and London, um, Austin and Berlin. They had an office in, in San Francisco for a while, um, but their main office is in New York. And, and some of the, um, our, our biggest design people are, are Michael Beirut, who's been there forever, um, fabulous designer. Um, Paula Shear, where's Paula? There's Paula down here. Um, She's done a bazillion pieces of, of great graphic design. And then DJ and Luke. I mean, these are all just like kind of uh, rock star designers. For the majority of what they do is graphic design. Um, they do some, they have to do web and interactive and that kind of stuff at this point. Uh, but they're, um, they're not a advertising agency. Does that make sense? So um, they, they will do the, the branding, the logos and such like that. Um, and you probably have seen one of their most recent pieces. Um, let's see where it's gonna be. Um, they just, maybe it's under news. Just reworked this here for San Diego. Michael Beirut did this for San Diego Zoo Alliance. Um, you probably have seen this through a TV ad. If you watch TV, you've seen this thing coming alive. Um, and, um, it's it's this logo and it's animated here, but you know it's got these the animals, the bird, and kind of the lion and the rhino in here in the San Diego Zoo. Um, and again, I don't think it's anything that you wouldn't be able to come up with, um, given the right time and the right inspiration. So um, you know you got to look at stuff. So you know find companies that are doing great creative work. Um, you know bookmark them and, and keep keep up with this. Um, Eddie did this, uh, the Omaha Performing Arts Center. Um, and they call it OMPA or something like that. It was kind of weird, but I, I've seen that floating around recently. Um, but you want to look at stuff and, and, and be inspired by it, um, especially when you're, you're um, trying to, you know, figure things out. And, you know, they actually here have pieces listed by um, subject matter, right? So if you're, you're doing something that's you know, I don't know, food and drink, kind of look at it and they're gonna, you're gonna see stuff. And most of the time they're doing the logo work and the, uh, you know, in this case, some of the packaging and those kind of things. So um, you're gonna kind of see stuff and it's gonna kind of take you to this new place. Um, and again, it's gonna inspire you to something else, right? So, you know, um, I don't know, this crown dispensaries, you know, this could easily be used for a travel company, right? I mean, you can kind of look at this like, wow, I never thought about maybe a shield, right? Because we're looking at maybe a company that specializes in European travel and Europe had all these kings and queens over the years. You know, so I'm gonna look at maybe, I'm gonna look at some shields and um, I'm gonna research that and see how I can take those kind of ideas and simplify them and make them um, separate and different and new. Um, so when we're looking, you gotta be inspired. Um, you know, and sometimes it's, you know, the shield here, but maybe something else, it's like, wow, I really like, you know, the idea of, um, you know, 
some kind of color palette that was here. Like this is a great color palette. I think that would really work. So you're not looking at this as the logo, but you're looking at this for the color um, or the kind of topography that's going on. So that's gonna help you guys as you start the design is to not um, think you gotta figure it all out because designers figure things out by being inspired by other things, by looking at things. Um, that's how things evolve. Uh, nothing gets designed out of nothing. Um, everything kind of gets evolved. I mean, if you I mean, look at something like a car, right? I mean, does your car look like something from 30 years ago? No, it's totally different, but it's got four wheels still and a gas pedal and a steering wheel. So there's obviously things that are there that are, are if, if, if you went back 30 years or 50 years or 100 years ago, oh, that's a car. You wouldn't know what that is, okay? It hasn't even evolved. Um, in a way that you can't understand what it is, but you can still, you can see the evolution. I mean, we have airbags and, and safety controls and, um, you know, uh, digital this, that, and the other in there now. Um, so cars have evolved, cars are safer, that's a good thing, but you can see where they're coming from. And when they do the next new car, um, you know, Ford is looking at what they've already done and trying to improve it, trying to make it better. Um, even when they're trying to make a radical change or a radical new model, um, they're, they're going from the past to kind of build the new. Um, and that's really what we have to kind of think about as designers is what can we do um, looking at the past to bring us into the new, okay? And, um, you know, it's okay to have uh, fun and ideas along the way um, to think a little bit different and, and not be afraid to um take that that leap okay that that's where things become oh wow that's memorable because it is a leap but the leap is based upon other ideas that have come along does that make sense so design is a process art is a process um you know and it's all about this kind of evolution that we're, we're working with so um make sure you're looking at good stuff find sites find companies um whether it be through the, the you know, internet or through Instagram, um, follow, look, be inspired. Um, it's gonna allow you to get to where you want to get um, and, and, and not feel like, oh, I don't know what I'm doing. Does that make sense? Um, you, should, you should always kind of be inspired as you go. Um, Cause and that's really kind of the beauty of design is, is kind of this, this huge evolution. Um, and like I said, it, it, everybody has to do, do this. I mean, I, I knew Milton Glaser, um, who did the I Love New York, and you know, we met a few times, and I took a class with him for you know some time, a week in New York, kind of a summer, kind of an all Milton all the time kind of class for a week. And um, I know, and he and he had said that um, you know his his stuff came out of you know intense research. Um, and when we say research, it's not just kind of finding out about the company and their goals and aspirations, et cetera, but also coming out of the idea of, um, you know, what have other companies done? What, what is there? And letting all that kind of stuff inspire you um, and, and him looking at things as he's working, okay? Um, and combining things. It's kind of like maybe like a, you know, um, it's a mashup, right? It's taking 10 things and bringing it together to make something new. Um, you know, here's your, here's your 10 ingredients to go cooking, right? And it's one of those crazy cooking shows on TV, right? Here's your 10 things, make something. Well, that's kind of what design is, right? It's that idea of here's 10 things, take parts from each and make it into something new. Um, so all designers, you know, from, from you guys as, as, as new designers up to, you know, somebody who's been doing this for, you know, 50 years. Um, artists and designers, we all have to have that inspiration um, to allow us to be creative and to create something. Okay, so um, look at stuff. Okay, be inspired. Um, when you find something cool, save it. Right, take a picture of it, whatever. Um, <clears throat> you know, again, we're, we're, we're blessed with, <clears throat> excuse me, always having this, this camera in our hands today. Um, you know, so there's no excuse in the past. It's like, I don't know, you're walking around and saw something cool and it'd be like, oh, that's kind of cool. 
um, and you forget about it. Well, now you take the phone out of your pocket and take a picture, um, or you see something cool in a in an article, take a photograph. Um, you know, do a screenshot and save something. Um, we're at this time where it's God. It's a great time. It really is a great time to be creative, where we've got this immense amount of resources um, that we can utilize to help inspire us. Um, and and don't, don't, don't put yourself down going, oh, it's not as good as whatever. Okay, don't worry about it, right? It's gonna get better, okay? Um, and there's not a thing that any of us create that we can't go, oh, I could do a little bit better. If I could tweak it again, I could probably um, do something else. Um, that's, I think that's the, um, the artist in this all, right? That, that artist is trying to paint that perfect painting that, you know, the, that Mona Lisa or whatever it happens to be. We're always trying for that um, sense of perfection. And, um, you know, we're, we're, we're our own worst critics by far. Um, so don't be afraid to do that. And let me real quick, um, you guys see on there. Um, I don't know I spelled it wrong, but let me give me a second. Yes, I know that. Who's heard of Brini Brown? Anybody? Yes, no? No, nobody? All right, let me let me pull up. No, okay. Um, you know what? It's a 99U talk. Hold on. I got to. Okay. I'm going to pull up this talk. Yeah, yeah no, country. I know. I'm going to, I'm going to pause the video so we don't get any problems here. Um, so let me pause my um, recording. Back to recording here. What do you guys think of uh, Brini? That was very interesting. Her uh, uh, very uh, very inspiring. Oh, really cool. It's great to see her like describe and the emotions and everything. Um, yeah, and, and I, I think a lot of times, especially, we don't think about it that way. Um, and, and I, I think what she's talking about is, is true, especially the part of, of kind of being our own worst creatives, our own worst critics, I should say. Um, you know, the idea of, of comparison, you know, like, oh, my stuff's not good enough. I uh, look at that one over there, that's so much better, um, et cetera. Um, you, you gotta just kind of keep going. Um, as, as she said, the, the idea of creativity and the innovation um, of, of making something new, um, you got to be vulnerable. You got to be able to um, put yourself out there. And I know that people are going to criticize. I mean, you know, we're going to look at a few pieces here real quick, and I'm going to give you a little quick critique, but I'm not criticizing from the fact that all oh, that sucks. It's all about trying to make it better. Um, you know, so if, if it's someone is in the arena, someone's a designer or a fellow artist and someone who gets it, awesome. But if it's, you know, your second, third cousin on the, you know, your father's side type of thing, and they're like, oh God, your art sucks. And, and they know nothing about art, design or anything else. Uh, you know, you take, take that criticism with kind of look at a little bit of a grain of salt, right? You I mean like, okay, thank you. You know, take some things under advisement or whatever, but um, you know, you're not going to change the world because of someone like that. Um, so, um, you know, don't be afraid to kind of go and do and present. I mean, that's kind of what I've been talking about with the kind of the Instagram where it's just like, you know, just do it, put your work out there. Um, you know, don't be afraid of the critics. Don't be afraid of, um, someone saying, oh, that's not that good. Um, everything gets better. And I, and I can tell you, um, we all get better by doing, okay? Um, I can I can probably um, with pretty good certainty say, you know, if, if you're driving, 
you're a better driver today than you were the day you started to drive. Um, you know, whether it was a couple of years ago or longer, you know, you're more confident, you, you understand that you can kind of um, predict things, right? You can, I mean, we all know, we see that car and you're like, oh, that guy's gonna cut me off or that guy's gonna make a crazy turn. Um, we can start to predict these things because we've seen it. And that same thing happens with art and design, right? We start to see things and go, well, if I do this, that's gonna get this. And if I do this, it's gonna take me down that road. And we start to be able to go, I don't wanna go that road, I wanna go this road. So we're able to kind of navigate much better because of time, because of, of, of doing this, because of, of um, trying to get the ideas out. So don't, don't shoot yourself and don't, don't look, beat yourself up because, well, I'm not as good at this or that, whatever right now, or you will get better, okay? Um, you know, and, and some things it doesn't matter about you getting better, okay? But if it's important to you and it's important to what you're gonna be doing um, professionally, um, keep at it, you're gonna get better. Okay, and, and, and listen to the critics that you need to listen to, but don't, you know, but know that not everybody is um, going to be helpful. Does that make sense from a creative standpoint? Other thoughts, what do you guys think? You can unmute the chat for a second here and it will. It makes, it makes a lot of sense. The, the whole aspect of having critique is, you know, as it's been reiterated is to make you better as a person and as a artist so it kind of goes without saying that you need that critique but obviously you just got to be selective with who's who you want to have like if it's going to be valuable information or if it's just to bring you down you know so that's kind of stuff you gotta you know as someone who's been uh, an artist for a while now and has graduated <laughs> as an artist so you know, I think I would not have gone to where I am right now if it weren't for those people who said, you got to do better than this mm -hmm. and showed you how to do better. So constructive criti criticism is always the best uh, kind of criticism. So, yeah, and I think that really is the only acceptable type of criticism. I mean, you know, criticism in any other way, I don't think is is good right i mean yeah, that, you yeah. know somebody cooks you a meal like oh that sucked no tell them what you like what you didn't like and let them be able to kind of solve it into you know making it better for the next time um you know and again I'll, always guys be careful that self self-criticism oh god it'll beat you up um you know you're gonna you know compare yourself and you're gonna look at your work and, oh god it's not that good whatever um just keep doing it Right, you you'll get there. Everybody finds a home. Um, it, it'll get to where you want, and then uh, and you know, and it, it, at some point, you you know, you you still criticize. It's not like I don't design today and go, oh God, I you know, we're always kind of doing this kind of self criticism, and and I think we are sometimes our own worst enemies by far. So um, you know, don't get stuck in there. Right, I mean, it's okay to listen to yourself. Um, listen to, you know, should I, should I not, whatever, but um, don't let that hold you back, okay? Like I said, too many people um, don't get to where they want to be in whatever it is, whether it's art, creativity, life, um, relationships, whatever it happens to be, because um, they're afraid to take that leap. Um, they're afraid to um, make that extra step. They're, they're afraid to, to put it out there. Um, I'm saying put it out there. Um, it will be okay. Um, things work out. Um, you know, don't, don't be afraid to that. And, and by all means, don't be afraid to ask for help along the way. Okay. I um, mean, not she doesn't talk about that, but um, we all need help along the way. Um, whether it be that supportive person, she talked about her husband type of thing. Um, but, you know, that, that supportive, she talked about a teacher or, or a mentor. Um, and that, that, that person that kind of inspires you. Does that make sense? Um, you know, sometimes you may not even have a quote relationship with them and just be like, you follow them on Instagram and they inspire you, right? I mean, what they do is like, wow, that's pretty cool. I really dig what they're doing. Um, and, and again, a lot, I mean, I can't tell you how many times I look at some and that the, the ideas and the, the things of success 
came out of the, the fact that somebody was uh, allowed themselves to be vulnerable and put their work out there. Um, and they allow themselves to be creative and, and use these outlets as ways to um, put the work out there. And these, these, uh, these passion projects turn into um, something else. Um, and, and it really, really, really um, happens, okay? Um, like I said, there, the key to success is to do it and put it out there and then do it and put it out there and do it and put it out there and keep doing it. And you're gonna keep doing it better because you're doing it and you're gonna keep putting it out there um, and, and people will see it, people will, will find it. Um, you know, Again, you gotta do promotion, you gotta do the hashtags, whatever, you gotta do the things that make people allow to see it, but you gotta be able to do it and don't be afraid of that. Um, I think too many times we're afraid of, of putting it out there because we're afraid of what somebody's gonna say. Um, and like I said, you know, probably 80% of the people, it doesn't matter what they say, you know, they're, they're of, of no consequence, um, you know, so do it. So I'll put Brini's talk up there. She's great. Um, like I said, I think that's one of my favorite talks that's going on. Um, and she's got others, like I said, and she's got, um, Ted talks and she's got some books and she's, she's fun, smart person. Um, She's got some pamphlets and flyers and whatever else. So this is her website, BrinyBrown.com. I'll copy that over here real quick. Um, so definitely worth you know a few minutes to check her out, and check out her stuff. All right, so um, let's take a couple quick minutes and look at some of the stuff you guys submitted. Um, I, I, I mentioned we were gonna talk about the next project and I will, what I'm gonna say is we're gonna next do um, travel posters. Okay, so you're gonna be applying your logo in the corner of a poster because you're gonna do a travel poster to go to some place. So what I want you to start thinking about is, um, you know, where will you be making a travel poster to? And let me just kind of um, kill that. And the meeting, no, I don't want to move it. Can I move this? Let me, let's open up a couple pictures real quick. Take us into that. Um, okay. So these are just like some examples of, of projects that were illustrator based that I, I kind of grabbed. Um, this is one's for uh, Australia. Um, and you can kind of see it's very map like, um, but everything here has been illustrated. And this obviously took a lot of time to draw all of this stuff. Um, but it's, it's you know a way that you can kind of see illustrator being utilized um, to, to help uh, tell a story and it's, you know, basically just discover Australia. Um, and, and again, just going to go through examples of stuff so you can kind of see what's doable here with the illustrator as we start to get into these posters. Um, this is just beautiful, right? Um, awesome illustration um, down here. Um, this one here, great, very fun, very playful. Um, again, you know, you can, you, you can tell the illustrator files just by the way they look a lot of times a very, in this case, a very flat art kind of feel, um, but they're doing a little bit, there's a little bit of shadowing going on. And, you know, back here on this one, there's a little bit of gradient feels. There's some gradients going on here with the hair. Um, just kind of nice a little camper again, very abstract, um, with this, um, the idea of camping. Uh, with the mountains of the nighttime scene. Um, just cool, cool illustration, right? So self-illustration. Um, you can do this, right? I mean, you know, part of, of travel, um, it, it, one is obviously seeing a new place, a new, new location. I don't know, seeing volcanoes in Hawaii or um, a beautiful beach in Cancun or something like that. But, um, you know, probably, you know, just as important with that 
it's not just the location, but the people you meet along the way. So, um, you know, when you're thinking about these posters, um, don't, don't be afraid to kind of approach it from a, a humanistic uh, point of view where, um, you know, you, you're, you're thinking about it like, you know, you're going to go to England and, you know, the people that you, the friendly people of England you meet in the pub type of thing. Um, so, we, you know, when, yes, you go to England to see, you know, Big Ben or go to an art museum or whatever it happens to be, but it's also that kind of experience, right? Whether it be the people or the food or the culture, um, the dance, the music, whatever it happens to be of that location that makes it specific, um, makes it special. Okay, so, um, you know, don't, rule that out when you're thinking about things. Don't just go, oh, I'm going to do a poster for Ireland. Um, well, yeah, there's Ireland, but when, you know, half the, of Ireland is going and, you know, having a Guinness in Ireland, right? I mean, you could have, a, could have had a Guinness last night for St. Patrick's Day, but you're not in Ireland, right? But when you're there, it's different, or the food, um, or the culture, or, or um, the the, the scenery and the people mixed together, right? So don't forget those kind of things as you're kind of concepting. So right now, I want you guys just to kind of think of ideas and concept and, and brainstorm. Um, look at look for illustrative styles that you're kind of digging, like, wow, this is kind of cool. I like this, or, you know, I really like how this is kind of done. So that will be the inspiration for when we start these posters. So I want you to kind of think about like location, um, what kind of information will be shared within that um, imagery wise. Um, and we'll worry about the words later as we go. Um, and then look at illustrations for artistic styles. Um, you know, like, hey, I really like this. This is kind of cool. It's very geometric. I like how they broke that down. I can do this with something else. Um, or it's, you know, kind of this, this case more, it's the science fiction kind of feel, um, but it's like more dimensional and three dimension type of idea. Um, this one's kind of very, it's kind of geometrical, but there's kind of like this, I don't know, punk rock, um, steampunk kind of feel definitely going on with it. Um, there's some aging and all those kind of things that are going in the color palette. So just kind of start to look um, through the internet for types of style. I mean, this is a great one here. Um, again, we get the people and we see the planes and then, you know, they're trying to tell the story. Um, it's a record of some sort. Okay. Um, and then we got back down there. So don't, don't, the homework now is finishing up your logos. I know some people are still finishing, but it's also to um, work on um, ideas and concepts and stuff. So um, let's just go through some work real quick. Questions on that before we go through some of the projects you guys submit it. That makes sense. So just kind of look for information, kind of figure out what you want to do location wise. Um, look for graphical styles um, that will work um, for what your ideas and your concept is. And, and so we're looking at preliminary ideas, um, inspiration, uh, artistic styles, um, location, what's special about it, what can I bring into this? potential poster to get people interested in traveling there. Um, things like um, your logo and stuff like that, we're gonna place that in. We'll go through kind of the hierarchy of what goes on a poster. Um, so we'll start with this one here, and it's like beautiful. All right, I got this one like, whoa. All right, this was just, you know, gorgeous. It came in, you know, last evening. Um, again, very fun. Um, again, we get the, we see the primary thing here is the paper airplane. The idea is traveling, but we also kind of see this heart going on back here, right? Smart, very smart here. Um, we've got this lush green kind of floating around, making a circle kind of bringing it together, right? It's kind of holding in place, uh, but the plane is kind of escaping a little bit, which is nice. Um, and you did a really great job of just putting the type in down here. Um, nice type choices with the serif and sans serif um, down here. Um, Midsummer. Do you, do you guys do you watch the 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 murders mysteries on B, on PBS? With that, Angelique, you have ever seen those on PBS? The Midsummer. There's a, it's some kind of made up place they did in in England, um, but it's like a murder mystery. I'm digging. I dig those murder mysteries. I've been getting into them over COVID. Right? Finding the mystery. Beautiful, right? Just a great job. I don't think I'd change a thing here. Um, I think it's really totally working. 
things you'll have to watch out for. Um, when this gets smaller, the word travels is going to get lost. Um, so as this scales down, let's say on a business card um, or potentially on websites, um, you might want to think about an alternative. So we've got this is the main logo, um, but me, you know, maybe the word travels comes out here um, or it gets extended out because being the size that it is, it will get it'll get lost. Um, and you might not need it. I don't know. But, um, you know, it's, as a designer, we want to kind of anticipate things that might be a problem and figure those out. Um, let's see, we've got a pure nice revisions here on this. Um, nice, like I said, we got the paper airplane, Mount Fuji, the colors are working beautifully. Um, just, you know, I think it looks like you did a little tie up with the type here. Um, excellent, 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 excellent. Again, Thank you. Feel free to chime in, guys. You know, just, just unmute yourself. Um, this is looking good, right? It looks like we've, we've done a little bit of tie up here, a little cleanup. Um, I think it's working. Um, you know, this feels pretty good. You know, I don't know personally if I go to Hell's Travel, but um, you know, I guess again, we can go there. We go down here. We've got top of the world. Um, I like the elements here, Miss Claire. Um, I think we got to work the type a little more, um, bigger, bolder, either around or pull it out. Uh, but it's definitely going to get lost, especially even at this scale here. Um, I think the imagery is kind of unique. Um, so, you know, I wouldn't sweat this as much as I would really worry about the, the topography and kind of pulling that out so that makes it read a little better. Let me go down here. Ah, Z. I dig this one, right? You got to send me a couple of them. I think this passport travel is, is you're headed someplace with this. But what I want you to do on this one, are you there, Ozzy, on this? Yeah. Okay. Um, I want you to look at passports as to what they are and kind of take the language from the passport. Um, mm -hmm. Let me just pull up an image here real quick. I was actually pulled out my passport and I try to look at it and get some ideas from yeah. it. I think that's totally what you got to do. Um, so we obviously have U.S. passport, we have others, but kind of look at like the typography. Um, you know, so if it's a U.S. company, we, we obviously, most Americans are going to kind of know this and you're replacing uh, the eagle with the globe, which is fine. Um, but, you know, maybe look at some of the, you know, other passports from other countries. Um, and you're going to see there's, there's this similarity about them with the... Um, the way the kind of words are kind of written, um, you know, European passport here for England. Um, so just kind of look at that. So, you know, I wouldn't be like, I would take literally take this typeface and find something that looks like this word passport okay. and put, put that in yours. You know okay. what I'm trying to say? Yeah. Um, because by using that kind of language, it's going to work, you know, and, you know, maybe even look at the colors and, you know, so, make your logo literally look like a passport from, right, a, right. from a from a illustrator kind of thing you're not trying to make a photograph you're trying to just kind of be a just illustrative way right um, okay. okay that makes sense that's yeah. cool like i said this i think can, i saw that i'm going yeah there's something there this will work um so look at that let me see what else okay. we've got thank you thank you professor vision is there da -da. you're still working i think on your um uh, we get, I get this, the hotel planner. Um, I, I think it would probably at the very least pull this OTLE down. Um, so the planner is more at the base here. Um, so it's, we see the H and we pull it right away into the hotel. Right now we're seeing the H and then we get to, oh, oh, it's hotel, right? There's like this pause, visual pause. So I think by pulling it down next to the H, kind of more of a center line here, that will make this a little bit more legible. Um, you know, in the dot com, we can pull that out on the side over there. Cat steps in. No, that's fine. <laughs> um, I think that's everybody that's turned in the logo. We've got some other work to go through, but um, did anybody else send their work? Just emailed it. Let me see then. Do -do -do.
not happy about when it worked, it worked. That's fine. Now, like I said, we're, um, there we go. We got some more coming in. Um, my God, this is nice. That's your record. I like the logo. This is cool. Very fun. Um, watch, watch up here where the S um, kind of comes into this implied curve. That could be a problem, right? So you're going to maybe give it a little more space. But I, I really dig this. I think this one's pretty tight. Um, kind of a spaceship, aliens coming in. That's kind of cool. Nice. Good job on that. And then we got some kind of troubles. Um, okay, so I, I think watch, watch your plane, make it maybe a little bit more kind of really, it feels like it's being squished, right? Nobody wants to be on the squished plane. Um, you know, and likewise here are these mountains, um, you know, because they're, they're kind of plateaued off. So that kind of, you know, feels a little awkward, like I said. Um, I, I think you want to just kind of maybe look at a few other things as you're kind of getting inspired here. Um, and then yeah, play, play I, I try my best. No, that's no, look, this is, we're all here. If we all knew how to do this. We wouldn't have to be in a damn class. Um, but I think you've got some elements here that definitely can work. Um, the, the shape is nice, like this, this horizontal kind of box, I think totally works. Um, you know, and again, just think, do I need the sun? Can I just have the plane in the mountains? And then working the type in there somehow. Um, I think I want you to, you know, keep working at this. Um, <clears throat> I think you, you're on to something. It's just better keep going. Does that make sense? And then looking, really looking at some right. as you go. So we're good. We're, you know, keep going at. Uh, that's somebody selling me something. Something selling. Must be aquarium. Over here. Am I missing the typefaces? Or is this what's supposed to be on this one, Cole? Looks so I'm not sure if I'm missing typefaces <coughs> or not. Um, I think of these two, this top one here is working. Um, cool, right? We got I like the L and the kind of arrow and the, the progress. You know, watch things like this. It feels like the even here on the, it feels like it's off a little bit. Yeah, see how it's like not center. So I would kind of pull this arrow up a little bit. So it's kind of the arrowhead's kind of centered in there. I um, mean, I think time, the word time could be a little bit heavier. Um, you know, so I would kind of maybe bump this up. So yeah, we're pointing travel, pointing to time, um, but kind of giving it a little bit more weight then, or maybe kind of a, a more of a chunky uh, type of font might work. It's pretty good. Okay, so I think the, definitely the top one is worth working with. And then there it comes back. And then, and let's just see here on this. Yeah, I think it's starting to get there. Um, I think what's going to help is I think working the typeface into something that's a little bit, um, we'll say, cleaner. Because mm -hmm. with, with all these kind of like extra shadows, it's, it's just making it slow to read. And then when it's, a little, it gets, it's a little jarring too. Huh? Yeah, when you get hard. smaller, it's going to be a little, a little bit harder. Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay, I, I can probably and, change the. And uh, think about stuff like I think like even on the word Philippines, sometimes we'll find these like little, um, they call them like uh, press marks. These kind of little things that go next to it. So. Um, let me oh, you see. mean like the little dots, maybe? Yeah. Or right. This, a little so, swirly. <laughs> yeah. Let me just pull up one here. And just, it's got to be something here in this little glyph. Try zero four one four nine. <laughs> um, you know, I mean, it could be as simple, as simple as something like a dot type mm -hmm. of thing put next to it. Um, you know, the, you'll find those there, but you also find these like um, really cool flourishes and kind of streamlined, you know, arrows and lines and stuff that you could maybe put next to uh, the word Philippines. Just kind of feels like it needs something more on the edge here to tie yeah. it together. Um, okay. Did you try it with a border? I have not tried it with a border yet. Try it with try it with a stroke on the box here on the on the right. over. See how it works. I don't know if it, it's going to work or not. It's going to help or not. Um, but I definitely think it's worth pursuing. 
and seeing mm -hmm. that that again helps to kind of encases it and you know and i think it'll kind of keep what they really do is keep your eye from flowing off then right sense. when we put borders around things it's a picture frame that's why i have picture frames one is obviously to hold the picture but it, it, it takes our eye from going off that it contains it so um you know yeah. think about maybe trying that there but yeah we're good we're, we're you're working there and again i want you to like keep looking at inspiration so you know if you see something you come across something you know go for it right work it um you know again this is what this is all about is kind of keep going and keep pursuing um you know and then maybe the first time you've done a logo for any of us but you know you're going to get keep doing it right you're going to keep seeing stuff and seeing new things and i'm going to keep inspiring you um mm -hmm. as you go along so yes yeah, good stuff good stuff guys right. sounds good all right thank you so um quick homework for the weekend work or rework your logos finish up whatever get that to me and then um, start thinking about where you want your travel agency um, poster for. It could be anywhere, right? We're doing travel agencies. It could be any place. Um, you know, feel free to pick a place you like, place you might want to go to one day. Um, you know, if you've never done Paris, hey, let's go to Paris, right? Make a poster. Um, never been to, you know, Hawaii or Australia or wherever. Um, hell, of course, you're going to go to hell. Uh, <laughs> um, you know, what does that look like? So that's fine. If you want to illustrate hell, I'm cool with that. And like I said, there is a hell Norway. Um, so you could actually do it a real place. But yeah, no, you, you, can, you can do it. And, and again, you can be like, you know, futuristic, right? If you want to hey, travel travel to Mars, you want to do a poster for space to Mars, that can be done, right? I mean, there, there were a whole series. And let me see if I have them here. Um, I thought I had them on my... There was some travel. I have to dig it up. I don't think they're right here. Well, this is some. Um, let me just. I'll go through these really quick, and we'll we'll finish up. Um, so these are were some that were kind of inspired by a um, WPA um, public works project back in the um, uh, depression. Um, and this is like a travel to Grand Tetons and someone did a Golden Gate one. Um, this is actually one from the period from the, the 20s and 30s. Let's go to Yellow's Yosemite, just got some logo. Someone did Bangkok. Um, so there's a lot of stuff online you can see, um, get impressions and get a feelings from. But there was a... Hmm, Logos. I got to find. There's a series of posters that the actually NASA did um, for travel. NASA travel, basically going to the moon. Kind of cool and stuff. NASA travel posters. So um, you could actually go to a NASA JPL site here. And they made these posters that are, you can download these. You can print these out, put them up in your room. They're freaking beautiful. Um, but they're really kind of cool star pictures <clears throat> for different locations in space. Um, you know, Venus and Jupiter and Europa, Titan, the moons. Um, and they're just amazing, right? So really, again, just another cool way of, well, I'll give you the dimensions. Don't worry about that right now. Um, I'll give that to you. We'll put it up online. But I just want you to kind of look at stuff. So if you got, you want to do this, you're going to take a poster to hell, or you want to make a poster to to Mars or or anywhere, feel free. All right, it doesn't need to be Paris or or you know Tokyo. Um, you can you can let your imagination go um, and, and be creative that way. Okay. Um, yeah, and these are cool. These are like I said, cool, and you can you can download these um full image so um pretty slick stuff and i don't know who did them i don't know if it was people at nasa or they people just submitted them to nasa i'm not sure the story behind them all but they're just gorgeous and really some really cool styles artistically so all right and we'll go back through again some more posters um Free to use, you can do whatever you want. Um, 
print them out, put them up in your room. And then, so it was people from mass, it looks like. I don't know. All right, um, questions. Questions, anybody? All right, um, I will stop it here. Um, <clears throat> thank you all. I think I get everybody that came in. Um, and like I said, we'll get we'll get everything caught up online, and um, we'll 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 make it happen. Okay. Um, like I said, work on the logos. If you want to revise or you're still working, please do. No worries on that. Start concepting your ideas of where you want to travel to, um, you know, to make your poster. Look at artistic styles, start to get those kind of things lined up. And we'll talk about the properties of it, um, size, dimensions. We'll give you guys a deadline, all that kind of stuff next week. All right. Anything else? Sounds good. All right, guys. Have an awesome weekend. And we will talk to you soon. Send me an email if you have questions. Thanks, Danny. All right. Thank you, guys. Have a good one. Bye, everyone.